Right, so with the Olympics around the corner, and I actually saw an outrageous thing yesterday about the factor track bike. I thought, let's actually have a look at all the track bikes. Can you buy them? And also, how much they cost. Now, obviously, the key thing to think about this is that they don't actually want you to buy the track bikes, understandably so, because they all think they have a big advantage. Um, if you're like a national federation, however, if you're a trade, like normal people, like look, you do actually want them to buy it. So there is some differences there. Um, and also that sometimes they just make it almost impossible uh, with the most handlebars from Pinarello. Those I literally don't think you can buy. But anyway, we're going to go through them. Just have a look because actually you'd be surprised how easy it is to buy some of them. So first up is the tr is the factor. Now, factor, I don't think make great bikes because at Israel, they seem to go very slowly on time trials. And I don't really understand why, because everything looks good, but they do go slow. Um, but anyway, this factor costs $60,000, which is pretty bananas. Um, the frame set, I assume is a lot. It got it has an SRM, which is pretty kind of them. Then we got black ink double discs. Okay, again, I don't really understand. They're not the best discs around, which are the Camagnola Gibbies. It's got Goodyear tires on it. That is tragic. 60K and you get Goodyear tires. Rough, you know, and then it's got not even special handlebars. I mean, it is actually bananas. I assume that they must have just done this because Dowsett did an hour record and then they were like, well, we just got to sell one. But yeah, that seems the most outrageous thing. The funny thing is trying to sell you an OSBW with a track bike. But anyway, the factor one I actually think is the most ridiculous one going. I'll go into some other stuff later. So the next up is the Hope bike. Now, I actually tried to buy this. Obviously, I didn't try and buy it, but I tried to inquire to buy this. And alas, it seemed very difficult. Um, it's got the Shell logo here, iconic. Um, so anyway, this is the Hope website. So it's it's written for 2020. I think they've got an updated one. They do have prices, 25K for a frame set, which, you know, doesn't seem that bad when you compare it to the Factor. Uh, again, you can see like the handlebars, they won't really sell you price on announcement or whatever. The wheels... Not that bad for disc wheels for the track, uh, which are top end. Like the thing you have to think is like these are actually just ridiculous stuff. Like no one needs a GB t uh, like disc. You know, a disc is a disc. Um, but anyway, so if you actually want to buy them, you've got to contact them. I obviously did send them an email maybe months ago. Never heard anything back because they just don't want you to buy one. I mean, if you were like a nation that didn't have this, you, surely you just buy all the bikes, including the Hope. Just test them. Like you know, if you're China, you just do that. You no know, stress around a velodrome. Figure out what's quickest. Everyone could be on a different bike. If you've got money, you've got money. Now, next up is actually the Fez. Now, these people, they just seem pretty open and honest. Like, here are the frame sets. You can buy um, whatever you want. Uh, this is also translated from German, so there could be some, some issues. But again, you can see, like, 28K for a frame set. Okay, that is kind of ridiculous, but it is what it is. Um, you can buy a fork. You can buy the handlebars uh, for 5,000, which is a lot. Uh, these are kind of the ridiculous ones. This is, like, for mass starts. So, again, 5,000. Um, but we look further down, you can see like the extensions that they sell, 5,000 again, that actually isn't as bad as you think. These ones, 1,700, again, like they're not too ridiculous considering, <laughs> like it is an Olympic thing. I don't know if you can ever actually get them. Do you know what I mean? Like you might put in an order, but they go, well, the waiting list is 20 years. So then you might not get them, which is a point, but at least they are kind of there. And then the, the wheels as well, 11,000. Okay. That is actually a lot more than the hopes, uh, but still like. At least there's a possibility to buy them. Uh, next up is actually the Canyon. Again, this is pretty easy to get, actually. Um, well, it seems that way. You might not get it until after the Olympics would be my prediction. But you can see here again, like, here are um, Denmark are on it. This is it. 19,000, which actually seems like a steal, to be honest. It's kind of iconic because there's actually no groups on it <laughs> when you think about it. It does come on an SRM. Very, again, very kind. Comes with Contis this time. Nice. Um, the actual design of it is pretty wild. I quite like it. It kind of looks a bit similar to the Hope, the back end. Um, again, comes with double disc, as you'd expect. It does come with nice bar and stem. So this actually, I can't say it's a good deal, obviously. But it, it's not like, wow, that's just ridiculous. Like, this is like, Canyon actually might sell this to you. Um, again, 2024, January. So you could get it before the Olympics. Um, like, it's been developed for US um, cycling, I think, with Denmark maybe as well. But again, like it looks pretty nice. I don't think it's too wild, to be honest. This, like, obviously it is, but compared to the other stuff, Canyon looks fair enough. Right, next up is the look. Now, this look was developed very recently. It's the new look T20. You can see they've done big marketing goals. Um, here you can see it's developed in France, which is pretty cool, made in Burgundy, um, if you're up for that stuff. Aero, 27% more aero. Uh, they reckon it's a lot more stiff, which actually, I guess, with track bikes, if you're cracking out 2,600 watts, doesn't matter. I feel like road bikes kind of less important because people aren't doing massive, massive watts. Um, it's lighter as well. 
I guess important if you're accelerating, uh, you know, it's, it's not insignificant. Uh, then they've got a nice crank set. Again, looks pretty decent. Um, it, it is quite cool. It's actually got a thruxel, so you can have standard wheels in it. I do think thruxel probably does make sense for track. Um, again, frame price, 7,900 for the t for the TT bike. Comes with cranks and comes with uh, extensions as well. So again, this is not like ridiculous, but look, you know, they do sell a lot of bikes. I think Russia use them, China use them, like a lot of people. Um, who don't have the money to make their own bikes will be using Look. So it does make sense that it's not ridiculous because they probably could make quite a lot of money off this, I would imagine, because I don't think that the manufacturing cost would be too high. Next up, we've got the Argon. This is the, the Argon that Australia used, the infamous 3D printed handlebars that went wrong. Again, not too bad. 8,000 for the frame set. Um, this is specially developed. You couldn't buy this for Tokyo. I don't think, or it seemed difficult. They had a different frame set, which Denmark used, and they actually did better in the Olympics. But again, you can see, like, it's nothing, it's pretty standard. Uh, you can see they did went to universities. It's, it's slightly stiffer. Uh, I mean, I don't really understand 2% stiffness increase at BB. Surely that's just minimal. But anyway, um, yeah, 23 mil tire clearance, which I guess is maybe good for track. It's got BSA bottom bracket. Uh, handlebars, okay, not perfect. Um, they're kind of just basic stuff. But again, it's like Argon are trying to sell you this bike. So fair play. Next up is, I actually think a ridiculous bike. I heard this quote at 80K. I don't think it is. Maybe the whole bike is. But actually, uh, if we think about this, uh, it's not too bad. This was for the 2021 Olympics. It cost 25K, I think it was. There we go. I believe that's probably just the frame set. Uh, made by Vortec, who obviously do a lot of wind tunnel testing. Everyone loves their little stuff. But again, like it looks quite nice. Um, can you buy one? I don't know. You've got to click to inquire and all the rest of it. So I'm skeptical if you can really buy this one. Uh, I think the Argon, it looked like you couldn't before, but now actually you can. Next up is the Pinarello, which again, actually very easy to buy. This is not the, the Team Pursuit version. This is the, tra the, the kind of bunch race version. Um, again, like it's not crazy. Like it looks like a nice bike. I think frame set, we're talking 8K or something. Um, oh no, whole bike, maybe 8K. I actually think that's decent. Like, you know, it's obviously like good enough for Viviani. He's like, he's won Olympic medals on this. I'm pretty sure. So it can't be that bad. Um, so again, it's like reasonable. If you're an Olympic person, didn't have a bike, you wouldn't be like, okay, it's annoying 8K, but it's not like, it's not like 60 um, but the thing that I actually want to talk about is these handlebars. So these are the 3D printed handlebars. They've actually come up with a price. They used to not have a price. They said it was fit on appointment only. But even so, this exclusive service is now available to the public. You've got to go to UK or Italy. So I'm in the UK. So I actually tried to book this as well. Again, no response. Um, so obviously I wasn't going to buy one. And also if they had asked any money for the appointment, I wasn't going to pay. But it was kind of interesting to see, would they respond to me? No. Uh, again, 22,000 for these bars is just bananas. Like that's actually full on ridiculous um, and incredibly difficult to justify at all. I mean, we thought the German track ones were expensive, like 11,000. These just are a different standard. Um, again, why are they so expensive? Well, they don't want you to buy them is ultimately the answer. And it's annoying for them. Like they actually probably cost them quite a lot of money to make. So they're like, well, if we're gonna sell one, we might as well just fleece them. And honestly, who is gonna buy them? No one, you would just get watch shop stuff. So this, I reckon, again, is one of the most exclusive things. I don't think you can buy this. I reckon the ones that you actually can't buy, this, the Hope, uh, and maybe the Works bike. I reckon everything else, it could take you some time. It might not come straight away, but I think they would actually fulfill it. I just don't think any of the, those ones you'd actually ever be able to buy within, like, for the Olympics, let's say. That's probably quite a good time scale. But anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video. If I missed out any bikes, let me know. The only one I can really think of off the top of my head is the Dutch Koga one. But those are a bit boring. I know they're quick. The Sprint Boys do well on them, but they are a bit dull. So I just assumed you could probably buy one. Um, but if there's any other glaring ones I missed, then I'll make another video about it because it's kind of interesting to see um, like the top end. It's kind of like the F1 of cycling, track cycling. It's like very niche. Not many people buy it. And the stuff they do have is just bananas expensive. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy this video. and see you in the next one.